All right, Jess, what are we uh, got going on here today? I'm pretty excited for this. We're making books. <laughs> Make some Good books. morning, Laura. Good morning. So today, um, Jess, you have book craft coming up and I already did the Maker's Fair. So we are, I'm going to show you how I made these books for the visitors at our booth at the Maker's Fair. And if I'm looking this way, it's because I'm looking at my computer. Um, so we have the six by nine size, which is basically a half size and a full size for people to choose from. And these instructions will be going on the website. So anyone watching wants to do this at home or something, you're welcome to give it a shot. And what, what was that web address again, please? So <laughs> that would be no. <laughs> wildebeestpublishing.com. Excellent. And, uh, if you have to Google how to spell wildebeest, it's not how you think, if you don't know. Um, all right, so we are going to try to make this quick so that everyone can uh, follow along, pause where you need to, obviously. Let's maybe go through some of the materials that we need first, right? Okay. So have you got your paper? I got my paper, check. Awesome. And how much paper? So. One of the things that I learned from doing this is that on a six by nine, you want to fold in sections of four pages at a time. You will fold in half to make a section of eight pages. And if you are, if you're a kid, that, that might be enough for a little tiny book. But if you are more of an adult and you would like to have more pages, then I would still do sections of four pages folded in half, making eight, which is actually 16 because books are front and back. Um, and then do you would actually, sure the, oh, you want, sorry, do we want to make sure the creases are really strong? Um, I, it doesn't matter a whole lot okay. actually, but, um, okay. that way, and then you'll have sections. And if so, the longer you want your book, you could add more and more sections. I would just keep adding them in these kind of groups. Oh, and did then, you fold it the long way or the short way? Um, a six by nine, you want to fold in half of the long way horizontal. So no, no, you're, you had it right. Yes, exactly. Okay. So this is the size book that most memoirs, uh, novels, things like that are, are, are written. Um, the other size would just be full page if you wanted to do it that way. And you just wouldn't pull, pull the pages in half, but you will need to use twice as many pages to get the thickness that you're, that you're going for. Um, so paper is the first thing. Then we also have some tools for cutting paper. So um, the best thing is like a cork back ruler and an X-Acto knife. Um, of course, if you have kids or something, they have those slicer page slicers, which might be better to use, um, a little bit more safe. Um, we're going to need some glue, lots of glue actually. Glue was a <laughs> is part of the process. Um, and then you have two options for, so once you have your paper together, it needs to be bound, right? So books have a binding, which means there's different styles for how the pages are attached together with each other. And in this process, we are either using string. So you could use yarn or this craft string. Uh, this stuff is pretty cheap and you know your kids might already be making bracelets or something out of it. So you have that, um, or you can use a stapler. <laughs> fold your papers together that way. So I think um, Jess is going to demonstrate the stapler, I believe. Ooh. If okay. You <laughs> and I am going to do the um, the string. So um, what I do with the string is take a hole puncher. If you're using the uh, the larger size, you could just use a standard um, standard hole punch. The three three ring one. Um, I just have this little hole puncher that's really adorable and the bottom pops up. So it makes confetti at the same time. <laughs> hey, Laura, can I ask yes. kind of a weird question? Always. Um, this might sound foolish, but how do I staple these papers together with this very interesting stapler that <laughs> we've acquired that I've never used before? Probably okay. Need to put staples in it. So the reason that you have that long stapler, and you can do this maybe with a flat surface at home if your if your stapler opens, but because you have to staple the center of the book this way through the spine. Oh, interesting. That's why you have the long stapler. 
This so I want to kind of get it on that nice little crease we just made. What do you recommend? Right. Two staples? Recommend what? Two staples, like one towards the top, one towards the bottom. Sufficient? I have never actually done the stapler method, so you're going to have to test that one out there for folks. Cool. All right. <laughs> you know me. Right. Oh, that works really well. I understand the purpose of this stapler. Now. <laughs> I know. So Jess was like, why do I, why did I buy this really long, awkward stapler thing? And I was like, the purpose shall present itself. And I'm a hands-on learner, so you can explain it to me and I might not be oh, able to. Oh, the it. one part of the process I skipped, you want to want your pages to be um, held together nicely. And so you want a, hand, a handful of like binder clips so that you can make sure your pages stay even you'll be able to trim them later with the trimming stuff but it will just help you to not have your pages all over and kind of hold things together so have a handful of, of binder clips around um that way your holes that you make or the staples you make are nice and straight um and then same thing for my next set of pages i'm just going to add them in here and then look out New York Times. Here comes your next bestseller. <laughs> um, yeah. And actually, this process doesn't really start here. We have, if you go to the website, you'll be able to download a worksheet that has story elements on it. Because one of the things, you know, if you're deciding what kind of, what size book you want to have, or what, at some point, we're going to get to the type of cover you might want to have. And the type of book you're writing will indicate. So if you're writing a novel, I want this size book. If I'm making a workbook, I probably want this size book. So um, depending on what kind of story you're writing. And then when you go to pick your cover, you know, I've seen a lot of people sit around and go, I don't know what kind of cover I want. Well, what's your story? And your cover is going to, your story will kind of indicate what your story is going to be. So I'm lining up these holes here. I'm just eyeballing this. You'll probably want to take a little bit more time than I'm doing. <laughs> and, um... You know, it's interesting too, is once we get the cover on there, I'm sure we can uh, talk about what actually goes inside the book besides the story at another point, like maybe um, author bio or some copyright pages or something like that, right? Exactly. And we also have those things available for the website. So from the website, you're able to kind of put together the book. So the publishing process, you're gonna, your story will be written, part one, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The next step, you've got to figure out what do you want your book to look like? Um, actually, and then you have to determine copyrights and determine, um, what else are we determining? The, um, yeah, your author bio and your headshot and all that good stuff. We have a lot of authors who are like, Oh, I need a headshot. I didn't even think about that. Okay. At this yeah, point, so the staple method is a lot faster, faster. She's already moved ahead. I'm still doing my string. Um, well, you said something about covers. So I was just really trying to think what this book was going to be about. And there right. just happened to be this really cool, hey, yo, yum, shark paper in there that spoke to me. So <laughs> the story is writing itself now. Right. Um, so if you're doing the string method, you're going to have your holes punched and then you're gonna take string and put it obviously through the holes. And you can do this however you want. You can weave them and you can make a lot of holes and maybe make something pretty. It's not really a part of the book someone will see, but you will know it's there. Um, when you make this, this knot, you don't want it to be too tight because if it's too tight, when you open the book up, the pages will rip, but you do want it to be a nice loose knot. You have a lot better dexterity with your fingers than I do. I'm glad I went with this. <laughs> it makes a difference. Um, yeah, it's just kind of like, it, this is, think of this as more of a traditional artsy binding and the other one is fast. <laughs> so um, let's see, what else can we talk about right here while we're waiting for me to finish this? <clears throat> The, the next step after, so once we've created this, by this is kind of like how the pages are glued together, right? Um, the next step, so in your book, you're going to have, um, you need to then pick your cover, which you were kind of doing. So at this point, you know, I would ask the kids like, okay, here's your, you've got your interior of your book. 
So what do you want your cover to look like? And this is part of the process we spend a lot of time with authors on getting their cover art finished. Um, so this is where you would pick whether you want plain paper or some of the scrapbook paper like Jess was describing. Because even though they say you can't judge a book by its cover, we all do, right? <laughs> right. Well, yeah. exactly. And plus, like, just having, you know, I would rather have a notebook with a cool little cover than just a plain one, personally. Yeah. And I remember when we were up in Syracuse last year and we were shopping at that um, little bookstore in town. The Golden Bee. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I grabbed that book only because it looked like an old VHS tape and it had like a really cool kind of old school nostalgic right. cover on it. Yeah. So the cover does make a difference, mm -hmm. um, but there's all types of covers. You can pick any kind of cover you want, but they do make a difference. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the book was pretty okay. The film adaptation was terrible, but aren't they, <laughs> aren't they sometimes? All right. So once you've got your string binding, you're just going to cut off your Lucy's a little extras there are you using um, safety, the safety scissors oh no sharp scissors uh these are kind of in the middle they're a little rounded but <laughs> i was just using the closest thing that i had um okay so from here all right it's time to do the cover you if you want a cover you can draw on so it's not like you're choosing plain but if you want to be able to, to draw your own cover then you can use construction paper or cardstock and um and just use that and then you can decorate it any way that you want if you want to have some flair or you want a pre-designed let's say cover then just you can demonstrate the just go grab some scrapbook paper um and you can use that but you'll need to cut its size so i'm gonna just can do the scrapbook i will choose the plain cardstock and now in your Professional I'm going to do orange because nobody wants to use the orange. <laughs> I love orange. Um, in your professional opinion, do we fold it over the book? So process? it depends. If you are using the scrap paper, it fits to fold over the book. If you're using the cardstock, because of the way the pages fold, it doesn't fit. It's not, it won't reach to the edge. So you've got to cut this in half you can go ahead and just fold it over. But it also depends if you want to have a little crease in the in, on the book spine, then you wouldn't want to do like just a fold over. So. Um, what did you use for that binding there? That is that a black tape? So this, nope, this is another strip of construction paper. So oh, cool. you can either use a different or even same pattern from your scrapbook. Some of the kids that we did this with, they would, I uh, had two girls who were using two different scrapbook pages and they just swapped with each other to do the spine, which was really oh, cute. cute. Um, so yeah, so at this point you would cut this in half or fold or fold over in your case, but then use those binder clips to hold everything together. Okay. So just kind of measure and cut. Well, let's see, let me see what you've got. You've got your, no, on your pages. Let me see your pages. Okay. Maybe I'll just do it the quick and easy version on this so people can see the difference and you can do the cutting of the cardstock. Right. Sounds I good. Um, I think because the staple method is making things a little bit different, but um right. I just oh, want to remeasure this because I forget. Amazing. <laughs> That's pretty cute. Those girls shared paper. That's some stuff we read in middle school, right? Since we've been friends since then. Right. It was very Let's cute. They came out nice too because they, they were like yeah. matching patterns, but they like the colors matched. Okay. So I usually just remeasure stuff on here. So this mat board thing is really nice because it's got lines. And so you can make things pretty straight with this. So you're going to just take the page, um, line it up with your cork back ruler, make sure I'm doing this in half, and then just make sure that you're cutting straight down, not at an angle, and there, you've got your covers. So you take this, add the cover to the binding situation. So I've got a start of a book, it's got covers, but you'll see like the spine is not it's open. So that's where we have to add a little cover for the spine edge. 
put these back together nice and straight. It's not going to be perfect, or maybe it is for you, but for me, it's not perfect, but I can cut these little edges off with the X-Acto knife later. Um, so right now I just take another, it could be the same color, different color, um, but grab another piece of cardstock. Um, they have these rainbow situations where you can grab, I'm going to do purple, I think. Even though this is the color that everyone wants to use. Purple? Yeah. Because it's um, the best. For this size book, I'm just using a two inch. So just taking a two inch slice off of this. Um, you know, and for the book you're doing, Jess, if you use the fold over method, you don't necessarily have to do this part. Um, if you just want your book to be one solid color or pattern or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I really like the shark, so I'm just going to kind of roll with this right now. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, fine since we're doing a quick demo here. So at this point, I just take this and fold it in half. Uh, like I said, if you wanted it to be more like a square spine, if you used more pages or something, um, this is hard to make a little square spine because it's too little. But if you wanted to, then you could um, like make creases in the right spots and have a little spine on there. But I'm just going to fold it in half. And I'm going to put it on. So it's going to end up going right on here. And I'll have a purple and orange book. And um, so to make this, I just have to glue the ever-loving heck out of it. <laughs> and then stick it on there. And with the fold over method, how would you suggest getting the cover to stick to? Is it just another staple situation? Um, or... So that is where we're going to use more glue and paper. Um, so we'll get to that in just a second. If you're using this and you're gluing, I suggest um, some decent glue kids glue and more binding. So take your little binder clips and put them on the cover while it's on the binding while it's drying so that it has some pressure on there for a little while because it will come off with this type of stick glue and we want to have that stay. So I'm going to grab another binder clip for this. I will say the binder clips actually even come in handy with the fold over method. Right? Yeah. The binder clips are kind of key. They're like having an extra little tiny set of hands on here. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so we can let this dry a little bit. Um, keep holding it down because this, you know, like I said, the stick glue is great, but we all know that it's sticking power is not fantastic. Um, but it's coming together. You'll see I've got a little bit of extra pages here, but like I said, we'll just trim those off later. Uh, the only problem we have now, like Jess was saying, is that the pages on the inside aren't aren't actually stuck to the cover. So an actual book doesn't have staples on the outside or um, or string or anything like that. You might find a someone who like a, someone who makes books. We have a friend here, uh, Carrie Venezuela with Amaranth Press and Bindery, and she makes covers and they have stitching and stuff in it. But that's kind of um. It's an artistic style, but a oh, book that you would pick up at Barnes and Noble, it doesn't have that. A, a book has a nice slick binding. And um, so what we're trying to do is hide on the inside, the glue and all the things we use to hold the pages together. So I'm gonna go ahead and hope that that's glued enough. But like I said, the, at this point, I've still got my cover and pages. So we need them to stick together. So what I want to do is put it back together with the binding. I'm going to undo one cover edge. Okay, so I've got this. And I'm going to take a sheet of paper. And you'll glue this sheet of paper to these pages. So this is where lots of glue comes in. <laughs> I actually like to use a little half sheet because it's a little bit easier to manage. So if I was doing this, I would pre-cut this so it was nice and straight. But right now for time, I'm just going to cut it in half. Right, so this basically is going to glue. You, you follow in dress, so it's going to glue onto here and here. So it holds the this onto that first page. And then you do the same thing on the back. 
and that will hold the cover onto the pages. Um, not lined up real well, so I'm gonna redo that. I see, that makes great sense. Yeah, and actually, if you look at like a hardcover book, that's kind of how it's how it's done. 100%. Um, I've cracked a lot of those pages on older books. <laughs> right, yeah. Opening, opening the cover okay. a little too jauntily. Right, and this is where you don't want to have your string too tight because that's it'll rip the pages when you open them. So you're just going to, again, go crazy with the glue on this little sticky page. Don't have to tell um, me. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking out loud here, but probably like some, you could use like duct tape. <laughs> the you only problem with duct tape, problem. it's not forgiving. So at least if I put this down and it's kind of in the wrong place. So uh, I would make this more straight if I had more time, but you put it in here and then you want to open and close it and make sure that it's in a spot. If you make it too tight, it'll rip off when you open it. So make sure it's in a place where like when you open the book, it will open and lay flat without pulling apart. Um, I did that, I can show you on this one. I put it too close mm -hmm. together. And so when you open the book, it kind of like it lifts upwards. So I didn't get it down in here in the corner far enough. So you wanna make sure it's pretty far down in the corner of that and then close it up. And then just do the same on the back side. So binder clip all the rest of your pages except that last page. So everything else stays together. Oh, that's a good tip. And then we'll do the same thing on here. Yeah, the binder clips, just keep on using them. A little extra hands. Glue, glue, hey, glue. Publishing company stuff doesn't work out for you, Laura. You'd be a great teacher. <laughs> My mom always said that. <laughs> You're going to be a teacher. Uh, so same thing, fold it, make sure we're sticking. It opens well, um, it's deep enough in there. It's not pulling the things apart when it opens or lifting up in a weird way. Um, that is, yeah, I'm going to let it sit here for a minute. And at this point, all right, so we've got, um, you're going to continue decorating your cover. And then on the inside, you would have a title page. Um, if you wanted to do this whole thing, you can still do that with a full sheet of paper and you'd end up trimming it off. We just did it small for time here. Um, <clears throat> it'd be a nice cleaner look if you have the, a whole full page, you know, going from edge to edge. And you won't see any of the, the binder stuff on the inside. The other thing you can do, especially if you have a bigger book, um, before putting this in, um, you can take your ruler and sort of make a an edge so that your book cover actually, your spine actually stays inside there. And then you have more of like this type of situation. Oops, didn't stick enough. So in your book, you'll have your title page and then you're gonna have your copyrights would go on the back and we have some example copyrights in there if anyone is interested. So the reason we provide this too is if you were looking to self-publish or you're looking for a publisher, you'll know all the parts that you need to have. You're gonna have um, title page, your copyright uh, table of contents. And then somewhere in here, you've got your author bio and your picture, maybe on the back, maybe on the back page, you could put it. Yeah, that looks really good. I actually like the purple and orange together. Yeah, that's the brand colors for the, the TV show. <laughs> oh, really? Um, yeah, so, all right. At this point, I've got little extras here, pages. So you just take your, your ruler and go along on all the edges and trim those off. Um, hopefully, you've done a little bit better job than I have in making things nice and straight. Um, I have not. <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't mean you. Uh, viewers, <laughs> hopefully you've taken more time to uh, make things are good than Jess and I have. Um, <laughs> you can, I need a, a, I need to sharpen my exacto knife. Um, but I mean, really, I should up. Have it ragged like a shark attacked it since it is. That's yeah. true. It could shark be part book. of your book. Um, 
just make sure that's described in the description. Um, and then keep trimming it off so you have a nice and square book. Plus, I was doing this for the teenage with a group of teenagers at the Maker's Fair, and they just kept going, oh, that's so satisfying. <laughs> when I was oh, trimming yeah, this yeah, stuff yeah. off. So, you know, this is kind of a fun part of the process. Yeah, no, making it clean because it is, it's, if you don't get it perfect on the folds, which I clearly did not earlier, it's nice that you can clean it up and still make it look better. Right. So all is not lost. Um, so this edge is looking pretty good. This I'm still pretty ragged. Uh, the bottom actually looks all right. Um, Cause that's another thing. Books, books are nice and trim and cut up. And at this point we can start decorating and um. I don't think that I've missed anything from this. Jess, any questions or... So Jess is doing this. You're doing this on Wednesday, right? Wednesday at the Dunedin Public Library. Woohoo! Um, yeah, we'll have some fun stuff there. I mean, clearly with a little more time, we could have gotten a lot more crafty and maybe thrown some eco-friendly glitter in there and <laughs> or some different paints and crafts and things. But I'd say I'm pretty satisfied for a quick and easy throw a little book together and understand the process it's great I can't wait to add my copyright page and draw a headshot of myself and write my own little biography back here right and so you've also you can grab some stencils so that your title is you know mine came with really mustache. artistic and you can you know if you're going to do that just draw a line and pencil so that you can have your letters go straight and then erase the pencil when you're finished um, if you're using markers, we have a set of markers we're using and they, they bleed quite a lot. So make sure if you're going to decorate your cover, if you're using this method that you put another paper in here, so it doesn't bleed on, onto your oh, good inside, point. Good inside point. page. Um, but see when you open it up, it pulls on these strings. So just make sure you don't make those too tight. Otherwise it'll tear. Interesting. Yeah, I guess, okay. um, is there any recommendation you'd have for the middle of the book where the two sections come together or should I have? So, <laughs> so for the string method, everything's tied together because we had two, yeah. I think for the staple, if you're going to do the staple method in hindsight, I would just, because the stapler should go through all of those pages that you had. Yeah. If you have multiple, like 20 pages, I think you're going to have to figure out, you might have to use the string method to make sure that the string goes through all the pages. Um, Otherwise, like you said, you're, you have kind of a, a gap in the middle, but in this book, everything's all tied together. So so what um, you're saying is that a little extra effort in the beginning pays off in the end. So. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that's it. But that's, all you need to do this is these papers, something to cut with, some string or staples, glue, and um, that's about it, you know, and then just have fun. If you have questions about the publishing process or any of this, feel free to reach out to us. And if you have a group of kids that you'd like us to come do this with, let us know. All right. Yeah, it's going to be super fun. I can't wait to see how this all turns out. No, right. knows, maybe we'll have uh, planted a seed in the next uh, nationwide or worldwide best-selling author. Right. I did my first book on a YouTube video. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, awesome. thanks, well for thanks for tuning in. Help. Thanks for your help, Laura. I really appreciate the guidance on this one. Yeah, no problem. My Excited. pleasure. It was a lot of, I have to say, it was more fun than I even had thought it was going to be. And people enjoyed it more than I thought it would. I don't know why, but um, well, yeah, just have fun with it. I mean, not that we're like doing this on the internet, but it's like, hey, we all need to do more crafts and get away from screens more often. So spend a little time on a screen to spend a lot of time with your uh, kids or friends or family and make some crafts. Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, see everyone. We'll catch you on Bye. our next video. Bye.